Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and Luke 21, 12. Matthew 24, 9 Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Luke 21, 12 But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Thanks for coming on today with me. We're going to be talking about this case. You are representing an Oklahoma street preacher. His name is Rich Pinkowski. And this is a really interesting case. He is claiming he was given a five-year restraining order. Before we get into what he was allegedly guilty of that led to this restraining order, restraining order what are the penalties for the order? Oh, it's a five-year restraining order. Uh, for signing basically two Bible verses. That's it. He can get uh, one, at least, you know, he can be put in jail, fined, uh, and taken away if uh, the he he be, he says anything in terms of Bible verses or anything dealing with these uh, LBGT people that felt threatened by uh, one of the Bible verses is uh, I don't know, check your Matthew eighteen six Jesus speaking saying that you know you it's so uh, you know. You can go to hell, basically, if you drag kids into a, an environment where they are, you know, led into sin and stuff. And he never approached anybody physically or contacted them directly. He just posted on social media. And the key here is that's where people are speaking today. That's where all churches are speaking on social media. So if they can tell you that because you someone felt they felt threatened, the LBGT people, the gay people, that oh these Bible verses. If that's it, then. Uh, I mean, if you out on the corner and just talk to people generally about the Bible, you can get arrested now if this is true. This is why this is a very important case. When he contacted me and I looked at the facts, I said, whoa, uh, in America, by quoting Jesus Christ, you can get a five-year restraining order and put in jail if you speak. Rich goes around and he and he protests, right? He he goes out and speaks about churches, you know, the Drag Queen Story Hour events, churches that are sort of doing those things, events where those are being hosted. This particular case that we're talking about here, there was a same-sex wedding. There was a photo of these two women that was allegedly shared on social media. These verses were shared. Oh, they shared on social media, yeah. How common is that? I mean, you've you've dealt with a lot of these cases where somebody has posted not necessarily, not a direct threat. They've posted Bible verses, right? And they've had this kind of a reaction from a judge. How How common is that? This is very rare. I have not seen it. This is the first time I've actually seen somebody quoting Jesus Christ and that being considered a crime. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Uh, I've been warning people about this for years as I've seen just general free speech being attacked across the country on social media. You can't say this word. You can't say that word. They take you off of social media. Now the Biden administration actually has issued an order where they're taught if you, if you put, give disinformation on the social media, you can be considered a terrorist. We're appealing this case, and we're going to try to set this – straight that he this man has the right to free speech and the freedom of religion if not 
Toss it out, folks. They're going to cancel Christianity if they want to. The people who gave us the First Amendment uh, believed in the, uh, that our rights came from God and that we had the right to speak. God gave us the right to speak out, to protest, to do all those things. They're encased in our First Amendment, folks. You know, some of the events <clears throat> that led up to this, you know, he he protested, and correct me if I'm wrong, a church and an LGBTQ organization. And these two women, there was a photo that I have read it was a public photo yes. that was that was shared, that he shared along with these verses. Quoting Jesus Christ on social media, if that's a crime, then folks, what's going to happen to ministers across the country if you say the wrong thing? If you say, well, I don't like this group, and here's what Jesus might say about that, you can actually get a restraining order issued against you if this holds. What was the purpose of the protesting, and how did this get in front of police? Because that's the question people have. Well, how did it go from social media posts, and again, correct any part of that that you feel is incorrect, to the police being involved in this? Oh, the people that were felt threatened by the Bible verses, uh, you know, to turn him into the police and objected at that point. They were threatened. They were afraid. But again, I say uh, more and more people are afraid of free speech today, by the way. Kids are being taught in school they can't say the word God. They can't study the Declaration of Independence because the Declaration of Independence says if you don't like the government, we can remove it. They don't want any of that today. We're at a real key point in this country where if we don't start protecting our rights, we're going to lose them. We don't have much time, folks, because like I got to say the generation I see coming out of schools today don't have any clue about what their rights are. If this stands, if this um, order stands and he is restricted, what are the long term ramifications in your view for other cases and for speech more broadly? Well, freedom of religion, you know, number one. Uh, you're going to see some ministers. If this case stands, ministers are going to be targeted for for speaking out about things they see in society and they, they consider sinful. Broadly, free speech is waning today. It's going away, folks. I see it more and more with political correctness movement and stuff like that. The key is here, like I said, the people who wrote our First Amendment, who fought for it, wanted us uh, to have values. They believed in Judeo-Christian values. And that's where our free speech comes from. God gave us the right to speak. They call the rights inalienable, inalienable rights. And I, and I ask people, what does that mean? And most of them look at me and go, I don't know. It means you can't be ta- they can't be taken away. They're always there. Express yourself. And that's how you keep things free, folks. And you, you, we want people to think critically. This is to too. People are not always correct in what they believe. So that I should be challenged. You should be challenged. So we'll wake up. And, and that's how you get politicians to listen, is get out there and speak. Some of the greatest men of history were people who got out there on the streets and said, I object. And I'll, I'm willing to go to jail for it. And this guy here, Penkowski, Rich Penkowski, is willing to do that. And I think it's really important in this case here. Like I said, religious freedom and, free, and speech generally could be lost in a case like this. I hope you see where this is all going. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female, and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven, and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared, because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is, that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and Scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times would deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 
lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We begin in Israel, where the military's Operation Shield and Arrow, a mission to stop the terror group Palestinian Islamic Jihad, has entered its third day. As CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, while there's talk of a ceasefire so far, the fighting continues. Within the past 24 hours, Palestinian terrorists have fired more than 500 missiles into southern Israel, targeting areas as far away as Tel Aviv. The rocket barrages have sent more than a million Israelis running into bomb shelters or lying on the street or sidewalk for protection from any explosion or flying shrapnel. This idea video shows Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile system intercepting many of the rockets fired by Islamic Jihad, and the IDF says with more than a 90% success rate. However, some rockets have landed and caused damage like this scene in Ashkelon. More than 30 Israelis have been treated for rocket-related injuries. This video also shows how a number of Palestinian rockets have misfired and landed within Gaza, killing several Palestinians, including a 10-year-old. Since the beginning of Operation Shield and Arrow, more than 100 rocket launchers have fallen inside the Gaza Strip. More than 30 Palestinians have died in the fighting, most of them Islamic Jihad terrorists. While Israel has been accused of indiscriminately targeting civilians, this video shows an airstrike being aborted after identifying children nearby. We're not looking for war. Uh, we uh, are focused on our targets and we'll do everything we need to protect our civilians. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned it may be a long campaign. My instruction is that we're ready for the possibility of an expanded campaign and harsh strikes taking place now and in the future. Overall, I think we have the upper hand, but it's clear you're on the line, and I appreciate your support and resilience. U.S. Ambassador to Israel Tom Nides tweeted, the U.S. is concerned about the continuing rocket launches today. We stand by Israel's right to defend itself, working towards a de-escalation. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Violence and chaos tearing through Pakistan for a second day in a row over the arrest of former Prime Minister Imran Khan plunging the nation of some 230 million people and its economy into crisis. At least four people confirmed dead. Dozens more injured. Police saying well over a thousand people arrested. And tonight, no signs the chaos is subsiding. 
protesters, supporters of Khan, a former cricket star ousted from office last year, now Pakistan's most popular opposition figure, despite facing multiple corruption charges. It all started Tuesday when Khan was in court for a graft case, then suddenly arrested by paramilitary forces in connection with a different case. You know, first they um, ousted him from power, then they stopped him from campaigning around the country, then they finally tried to assassinate him twice, and now they've arrested him. Pakistan's government alleging Khan gave favors to a real estate tycoon in exchange for land for a university. Now, this is worst kind of corruption. And he did this to gain personal benefits. But Khan supporters say the military and the government are conspiring to keep him from returning to power. This supporter saying, for Khan, we're willing to lay down our lives. Security forces kept protesters far away from a court hearing today where Khan was ordered detained for at least another eight days while he urges his supporters to keep up the fight. Khan's lawyer saying his client gave him this message to the nation. Even if they impose martial law, you have to stand your ground. In cities across Pakistan, police firing tear gas and water cannons at Khan's supporters. The Radio Pakistan building set ablaze while protesters set fires in the streets. This Karachi resident says transportation is shut down, students unable to get to school. He says it's total chaos across the country. The U.S. Embassy in Islamabad has canceled all consular appointments this week and is restricting diplomats' travel for their own safety. The State Department now warning Americans in Pakistan to avoid large gatherings and avoid traveling within the country if they can. After less than four hours in school, the day's already over for these children. It's the annual dry season in the Philippines, but the heat has become too intense for most people. This elementary school in a Manila suburb has cut classes short to allow students to go home before temperatures peak in the afternoon. In one secondary school south of Manila, nearly 150 students suffered heat stroke last month. Seven of them fainted. Two had to be taken to a hospital. It's not just this school that is adapting to the extreme heat. Others have started what's called blended learning, where students spend half of the week in school and the other half at home, learning online or through print modules. Parts of Asia, including Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam and China, registered record temperatures in April. In Thailand, the heat index reached 54 degrees Celsius, the highest in its history. A region in the south of France is set to declare a crisis drought level. The Agli, one of the main rivers of the Pyrenees Orientales, has been all but completely dried up since the middle of March. These cracked soils testify the lack of water in this tourist area that is also home to many farmers. For this orchard, adapting to new water restrictions will be a hard blow when dry periods have already done so much damage in Europe this year. Car washing, gardening and pool filling will be banned. This first set of water restrictions is an effort to conserve water resources and prioritizes drinking water above other use. The department has had a rainfall deficit of 60 to 65 percent over the past year. A crisis level of drought has already been activated in four French departments this year. And the drought raises fears of another serious phenomenon an outbreak of fires due to dry vegetation. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Clush and green. But this part of Catalonia is the epicenter of a severe drought, and the soil here is so thirsty. Manel Puig won't even attempt to plant corn this year. The plots of land lay barren and parched. He's also worried about his barley crops. The grain should be plumper by now and the stems elongated. Normally, the yield would be five to six tons of barley kernels per hectare. But it's looking bad and this month of May is key for his crop to mature. The stem is okay, but the most important thing is for the grain to become ripe, heavier. If we don't have any water, this won't happen we would lose at least 50 percent. If this heat continues and there is no rain before the end of the month, then it won't grow. It's been several weeks since the fields were last irrigated, 
and Manel doesn't know when it could happen next. His rain-fed crops are completely lost. The irrigation canals are nearly empty. Those lines show you where the water level is usually at. But since the beginning of the year, there has been barely any rain. So restrictions had to be imposed to make sure there's enough drinking water. And it's the farmers that are the hardest hit. One village over in Miral Camp is the apple and pear trees that are at risk. It takes years of work and patience before they produce the fruit. Josef Maria Petrol says they require sun, plenty of that, and a well-drained soil to bloom. None of that here at the moment. He's now forced to use chemicals to reduce the number of fruits growing on each tree, hoping on some rain to save the others. His brother Lorenz is pessimistic. It's a chain reaction. It starts from us. Then the workers will lose their jobs. Then the butchers because their prices will go up because there is no water for the animals. Then some of the fruit shops will have to close down. It's a chain reaction and we don't know where it stops. It's up to the government to come up with a solution. Catalonia is considered one of the key farming regions of Europe. With how the year is shaping up, an agriculture disaster seems in the making affecting people well beyond the borders of Spain. Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For these firefighters in Western Canada, this is a daunting and potentially deadly situation. Raging wildfires fanned by strong winds. With more than 100 burning across Alberta, the province's top official has declared a state of emergency. This is not a step that we took lightly but it's one that will allow the quickest and most effective response. Visiting one of the worst affected areas, she says the situation is unprecedented and warned it was far from over. It could last a long time, uh, we, weeks if, if not months. Uh, the fire officer was just telling me that they had, similar because of the, the peaty soil, they had a, a similar fire that took over a year to extinguish. After a week of record heat across Western Canada, officials say persistently dry weather is to blame for the fires. The temperature and the wind combined with the lack of precipitation this year really created this mix that created the, the extreme fire risk that we entered a fire ban a week before this fire broke out in the county. The arrival of more favourable weather conditions in the south has allowed firefighters to reach previously inaccessible areas. But conditions remain difficult in the north and in neighbouring British Columbia, where authorities warn hot and dry conditions are due to return in the coming days and could further fuel the flames. That's prompted more orders to evacuate people from their homes and the fear there could be more wildfires to come. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Submerged once again. After months of floods ravaged Pakistan last year, residents and business owners in the north are suffering again and bracing for more rainfall. Due to the recent heavy rain and floods, we have lost millions of rupees. My hotel building is badly damaged. Tourism in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province was badly damaged in 2022 and many roads and bridges were destroyed. And in the last few weeks, the largest province, Baluchistan, has been hit by hailstorms and flash floods, cutting off roads and destroying crops and jobs, as well as grain needed for the coming year. They've also made life harder for people living in tents after last year's floods destroyed their homes. I'm going to categorically say that the country cannot cope with another freak event. It has been um, a catastrophic last year and 
people are still rebuilding in those areas, particularly the south of the country, Sindh and Balochistan, to say that, you know, we will be able to uh, create adaptation structures while going through other uh, extreme events is very tough. So no, we, we hope that there is no extreme weather, but as you know, hope is not a plan. But the country's also been facing heat waves and lack of water for irrigating crops. The United Nations blames climate change for the extreme weather and says more than 8 million Pakistanis are facing food shortage crisis. With unpredictable rains and rapidly melting glaciers, Pakistan is fast becoming a global hotspot for climate crisis. We are on a thin ice and the ice is melting very fast. UN as a thought leader is assisting the government and the people of Pakistan to develop an overall vision of climate adaptation. Erratic temperatures and unusual rains are creating other problems like these locusts that emerged in the last few weeks in some districts of Balochistan. The situation is on track to become worse unless Pakistan's climate emergency becomes a priority for its decision makers. The devastation in villages in South Kivu is hard to put into words. Rescue efforts are ongoing but without proper equipment to do the job, the process is slow and painful. Everyone here is doing what they can to help. The government is having a hard time sending heavy machinery because the roads have been cut off. The only way to travel now is by boats in Lake Kivu. Alpha Safari says 12 of his relatives are dead. He's looking for the rest of his family. He's been here for days, but he's also struggling with his basic needs, food, shelter and clothes. Health workers say they're running out of supplies to treat the injured. They are worried about waterborne diseases like cholera. In North Kivu province, another tragedy struck west of the provincial capital on Tuesday. Several people are missing in a landslide in a mining area in Masisi territory. Miners heard a loud rumble. Those who could ran for safety. Some did not make it. This is another tragedy that Congolese are grappling with. They are also dealing with armed groups. Millions of people are already displaced in this region. Aid workers say they are overwhelmed. 11-year-old Francois Matabishi and his three brothers are building a shelter on a hill in the village of Nyamukubi. His parents and other siblings are among those still missing after the landslide. They sleep in the cold, their new home is leaking, and they have no food. We don't have anyone to help us. We only have the clothes we're wearing. I don't know what to do. We miss our parents, but they're gone. A short distance away, Birage Kadogo, another survivor, is trying to keep his wife safe and dry. Their children are missing. I looked for my children, but I couldn't find them. We even searched Lake Kivu. They must be buried underneath the mud. All these families have similar stories. The landslide killed hundreds of people, relatives, friends and neighbours. This is very much a community mourning. Aid has started trickling in, but the number of people who need help far exceeds the supplies. Francois and his brothers tell us they are trying to stay strong, stay alive and survive. Tuesday night storm brought golf ball sized hail. The destruction lasting over 40 minutes. It was relentless. It was the craziest thing I think I've ever seen. The storm left blown out windshields, broken cars and property. I've seen tow trucks carry cars out of here all day. I've got uh, two cars that are completely, uh, probably totaled. I've got a lot of personal property damage, the grill, the smoker, all of that good stuff is just, it's, it's toast. Wednesday afternoon, Clay Zentmeyer was vacuuming broken glass from inside his car. Our car is probably totaled. Uh, my wife's car is, so probably going to have to look at getting a new car. So um, that can be tough. And tonight, residents in this town are on edge, bracing for the unknown. What we are witnessing is just a glimpse of what the seven-year tribulation will be like. It is evident that planet Earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death destruction and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, 
There will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth, who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin, will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. When the fifth seal is broken, those who have been slain for the word of God and their testimony will be given white robes and told to rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. When the sixth seal is broken, there will be a great earthquake. The sun will become black as sackcloth of hair and the moon like blood and the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. When the seventh seal is broken, there will be silence in heaven for about a half an hour. After seven seals are opened, seven trumpets are blown. When the first angel sounds, vegetation is struck. Hail and fire mingled with blood will be thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees and all the green grass will be burned up. When the second angel sounds, the seas are struck. Something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea, which seems to be a meteor causing a third of the sea to become blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea to die, and a third of the ships to be destroyed. When the third angel sounds, the waters are struck. A great star falls from heaven, burning like a torch on the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters become Wormwood, and many men will die from the water, because it will be made poisonous. When the fourth angel sounds, the heavens are struck. A third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them are darkened. A third of the day will not shine, and likewise the night. When the fifth angel sounds, Satan is cast down from heaven to release demons from the bottomless pit to torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. When the sixth angel sounds, a demonic army numbering 200 million will kill a third of mankind. Four billion people have now died at this time, equaling half of the world's population. When the seventh angel sounds, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant is seen in his temple, and there are lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. After seven trumpets have sounded, seven bowls are poured out. When the first angel pours out his bowl, a foul and loathsome sore will come upon the men who have the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image. When the second angel pours out his bowl on the sea, it will become blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea will die. When the third angel pours out his bowl, the rivers and springs of water will become blood. When the fourth angel pours out his bowl on the sun, power is given to him to scorch men with fire and men are scorched with great heat. When the fifth angel pours out his bowl on the throne of the beast, his kingdom becomes full of darkness, and they will gnaw their tongues because of the pain. When the sixth angel pours out his bowl, it results in the Euphrates River being dried up, and the armies of the Antichrist being gathered together to wage the battle of Armageddon. When the seventh angel pours out his bowl, a loud voice comes out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. A devastating earthquake flattening everything on planet Earth followed by giant hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, completes the seal, trumpet, and bold judgments. God's judgment against this wicked and unrepentant world will leave no doubt as to his wrath against sin. Yet there will still be people blaspheming God and not repenting and giving him glory. Revelation 16.9 And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Revelation 16.21 and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne, 
and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book of life? If not, I pray you get that done today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.